As Hammond said, this does come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 24. I invite you to hear this with open ears, an open mind, and an open heart. Someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus said to him, Man, who appointed me as judge or referee between you and your brother? Then Jesus said to them, Watch out, guard yourself against all kinds of greed. After all, one's life isn't determined by one's possessions, even when someone is very wealthy. Then he told them a parable. A certain rich man's land produced a bountiful crop. He said to himself, what will I do? I have no place to store my harvest. Then he thought, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. That's where I'll store all my grain and goods. And I'll say to myself, you have stored up plenty of goods, enough for several years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, fool, tonight you will die. Now who will get the things you have prepared for yourself? This is the way it will be for those who hoard things for themselves and aren't rich toward God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. There is more to life than food and more to the body than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither plant nor harvest. They have no silo or barn, yet God feeds them. You are worth so much more than birds. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as I said, Saving Mr. Banks is the story behind the story of the making of of Mary Poppins. In the film, Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney. And uh, this is true. Walt Disney spent 20 years. How long? 20 years trying to get the permission of the author of the Mary Poppins books um, to, to make a film. Well, the problem was that Mrs. Travers, Pamela Travers, the real Pamela Travers, hated Disney. She could not stand Snow White. Can you imagine that? Uh, She just hated Snow White. And she didn't want anything um, about Mary Poppins. She didn't want anything to do with animation or dancing penguins or anything like that. And so it took Disney 20 years to convince her to do that. And they actually began production. And she said she was going to come over and talk with him. And I've listened to some of the She required them to tape it. And I've listened to some of the tapes. And if you've seen the film, you've heard some of the real tapes probably. They are awful. I mean, she was just, she just really did not want uh, Disney to do that. But, you know, she needed the money. She needed the money. And so so eventually she relented. But um, anyway, in the film, as I say, Tom Hanks plays plays Walt Disney, and Emma uh, Thompson plays Pamela Travers. And in the middle of the film, uh, they just about have Mrs. Travers convinced to, to make Mary Pop, to let them make Mary Poppins, and she finds out that there are going to be dancing animated penguins. And she storms out of Disney's office and catches the first flight back to England. He catches the next flight to England and meets with her in, in uh, her home, and, and this is what happens. Well, Mrs. Travers had a very hard time letting go of Mary Poppins. And they kind of gloss over this in the film, but Pam Travers literally spent the rest of her life, she went to the grave working to prevent Disney from ever making another Mary Poppins film. In fact, when the musical was made that uses, it does use some of the music from the film, she said that she did not want a single American to work on Mary Poppins. The only credit that any American has in the musical of Mary Poppins is uh, the, are the songwriters or composing the songs. It's hard to let go sometimes, isn't it? It's really hard sometimes for us to let go. And, and last week we talked about grief and, and we said that sometimes when we're grieving, uh, we act in ways that are out of character, right? Uh, And sometimes we will even turn against and fight the same people who share our own grief. That happens in our gospel reading today. Uh, Jesus was teaching his disciples one afternoon, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, this guy interrupts Jesus. Now, how many of y'all are going to interrupt Jesus while he's in the middle of teaching something? 
not me, right? I, I might sheepishly kind of raise my hand. This dude just full on, out of the blue says, hey, teacher, tell my brother to split the inheritance with me. And apparently his brother is probably right there. The, the text doesn't say that, but I kind of think the dude's brother is standing right beside him. And, and he says, Jesus, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Now, I don't know about your family, but if you really want to get my family fired up, mention the inheritance, amen? Right? And this guy is totally fired up about that. And, and the custom back then was that uh, when, when a father died, the estate, most of it was left to the oldest son, and the oldest son kind of served as the executor. And he was supposed to divvy it up uh, among his other brothers because women couldn't own property back then. Thank God things have changed. Amen? Women? All right. But uh, anyway, that's the way it worked then. Well, if a, if a younger brother, if the older brother wasn't giving the younger brother his fair share, the younger brother had to go and find an arbitrator. And an arbitrator could be a judge, it could be a, a well a, a well known or well respected rabbi like like Jesus. And so this younger brother, now I know none of y'all have older brothers that won't share. I, I am one who won't share. Amen. Um, and I would just, if my brother wouldn't share with me, I would just take it from him. But anyway, um, that's another story. But uh, Jesus, Jesus was clear. He did not come to be a lawyer or a judge. He did not come to be a lawyer or a judge. And so he turns back, and in Luke's gospel, one of the things that he does so well is he teaches. He teaches. And so he decides to, to teach these guys a lesson. He says, hey, man. Who put me in charge? Who put me in charge as an arbitrator or a judge between the two of you? And then he tells them a proverb. He says, look out and guard against all kinds of greed. Look out and guard against all kinds of greed. Because even though you might be in the, right in the middle of a season of prosperity, your life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And so often we make life about things that aren't important, amen? So often in life, we, we make our life about things that are not important. And so the, Jesus tells these brothers the story of a man like that. He says, once there was this rich man and he had so many possessions, he ran out of storage room. Now, I know none of y'all have a problem with storage in your home, right? Um, yeah, I, I've had, I have some of that as well, so I'm not throwing rocks here. But um, he runs out of storage room, and, and this guy was a farmer, and so he decides to tear down his old tiny barns and build these giant silos. And then he, he looks at it, and he says, well, I have so much stuff, I can just lie back and eat and drink and be merry until I die. Well, as fate would have it, what happened that very night? He died. He died, and God said, you fool, I'm taking your life right now. And who's going to get all this stuff that you have collected? And, and what's the answer to that question? Who gets all the stuff when a father dies? The oldest son who divvies it up. And then, of course, they would start fighting just like these two brothers who were standing in, in front of Jesus. So often we make our lives about things that aren't important. And Jesus reminds these two brothers that... What's more important than their possessions is their relationship with one another and with, and with their God. So let me ask you, what's important to you? Probably if I asked you just one-on-one -on -one and, and I wrote down what you said, a lot of us would say, God, God is important to me. And, and some of you would say, well, my kids are important to me or, or my, my spouse or, or my girlfriend or my boyfriend or that dude that I think is awful cute. You know, that person is important to me. Or, um, or my family, or my church family are important to me. But let me ask you a question. If I wrote down every minute that you spend during the day, would it show that those things that you say are important to you are really important to you? Would I have any idea that those things were important to you? In, Mr. Excuse me, in Mary Poppins, Mr. Banks, the father, realizes that he has devoted his life to things that don't really matter. He had spent his entire life trying to make a career for himself and, and, and trying to make a name for himself and trying to make more and more money for himself and for his family. 
And he never got around to doing simple things for his family, things like repairing their kite, much less going out and flying the kite with his kids. But one night, Mary Poppins sings a lullaby to the children, and it's, it's, about, it's about a bird lady that they will see the next day when they go on an outing with, with their father. Um, of all the songs in all the Disney films that Walt Disney himself produced, this one was his favorite. This one was his favorite. They said he just lived a few years after Mary Poppins came out, uh, but he would gather his uh, directors and the artistic directors and the uh, musicians once a week in his office and kind of lay out what was coming uh, in, in the future for them. But they said that just about every Friday he would ask the songwriters to play the song. And they would play this song and he would stand at his window and look out at all of the things that he had created and planned to create. And he would say, yep, that's what it's all about. So listen to this. This is what happens the next day on the way to the bank. Of course, what Mr. Banks wants to show Michael, you know, the alternative is for him to invest his tuppence in the bank. And ju just in case you don't know, tuppence is, is a, a pronunciation of two pence. You have it? And it's like this. It's, it's worth two pennies. Can you catch it? Oh, that was a good catch. Intercepted. Um, worth two pennies. It's, it's really nothing. It's really worth next to nothing. But um, So anyway, Mr. Banks says, why don't you invest it in the bank and, and you can earn some interest on that money. And while the bank has it, they'll build bridges in Africa and do all kinds of sort of things, sorts of things. Things that Michael it has zero interest in at all. And so uh, he just wants to take his tuppence and give it to the bird lady so that he can feed the birds with the breadcrumbs. Well, Michael makes a scene in the, inside the bank and there is a run on the bank because of that. And Mr. Banks gets fired. And because Mr. Banks, when Mr. Banks gets fired, he realizes that everything that he had spent his life on up to that point was for nothing. He had spent his life on things that were not important at all. And he had neglected his wife and his children. Mr. Banks takes off singing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious out of the, out of the bank and he runs, his home as, uh, runs home as fast as he can. And this is what happens there. Of course, I get to the park and all the other bankers are there flying their kites because guess what? Daddy Banker died too. So uh, they're all celebrating. <laughs> they all realize that they've been working too hard for the wrong things. But um, Jesus said to his disciples, so I'm telling you, don't worry about life, what you'll eat, or the body, what you'll wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Think about the ravens. And if you've read your Old Testament, you know Old Testament law, ravens were unclean. They were nasty birds, all right? Uh, gross birds. Think about the ravens, Jesus says. They don't plant seeds or harvest. They don't have closets or storage buildings, but God feeds them. You're worth way more than a bunch of birds. Now, sometimes we think Christianity is about just laying it all on the line. And, and certainly, you know, God invites us to live self-sacrificially and sacrificially and to give sacrificially. But very few of us um, will actually ever even have the opportunity to pay the ultimate sacrifice for following Jesus. For most of us, we pay a little bit of our life each and every day. And so it's important for us to remember that simple acts of charity and kindness should be something that we all do each and every day.
ขาจะไม่ได้อะไรเลยไม่ได้รวยขึ้นไม่ได้ออกทีวีไม่มีใครรู้จักไม่ได้มีชื่อเสียงที่มากขึ้นเพราะสิ่งที่เขาได้คือได้แค่ความรู้สึกได้เห็นความสุขได้เข้าใจได้ความรักในสิ่งที่เงินซื้อไม่ได้ได้โลกที่สวยงามกว่าเดิมในชีวิตคุณอะไรคือสิ่งที่คุณต้องการมากที่สุดในเราฟิตเตอร์ไปในทรัพย์ในเงินในสิ่งอื่นๆและพระเจ้าเราขอพระองค์ให้เราช่วยเราในการยอมรับแต่ยิ่งกว่านั้นช่วยเราให้เราอยู่กับพระเจ้าเราขอพระองค์ในพระเจ้าในพระเจ้าในพระเจ้าในพระเจ้าใ